My Lords, I'm very grateful to the noble Lord, Lord Farmer, for introducing this debate. His work is inspiring, and I want to say yes to all that he has said. I'm sorry I only have six minutes. I too would like to welcome the noble Lord, Lord Bellamy, and I look forward to his maiden speech. I refer to my interest stated in the register as Anglican Bishop for Prisons and President of the Nelson Trust. Last week, I visited HMP Wakefield, and in reflecting with the governor around long sentences, he said he'd asked a group of prisoners that if they'd known the tariff for their crime, would that have been a deterrent? For all but one, the answer was no. Most crimes are rarely planned in a calculated way. Earlier this month, the Independent Commission into the Experience of Victims and Long-Term Prisoners published a report with a comprehensive set of recommendations, holding together for the first time both the perspective of the offender and the victim. The report highlighted that the number of people given a prison sentence in England and Wales of more than 10 years has more than doubled in a decade at an ever greater cost. Where is the evidence that greater severity equates to greater deterrence or indeed a safer society? We need to curb the unhelpful and inaccurate rhetoric about keeping the public safer through longer, tougher sentencing. What matters more than longer and longer sentences is how people are spending their time whilst in prison, not only in terms of education and purposeful work, but also regarding meaningful interventions which prevent re-offending and someone else becoming another victim. The issue of holding together justice and restoration is central to Christian theology, and I believe it's vital for us to rediscover how those two dwell side by side. As has been said, at the opposite end to long sentences are short sentences. These two are often not the answer. From my work with the Nelson Trust and women's centres, as has been said, I know the value of community sentences, police diversion schemes and other non-custodial interventions. Holistic intervention in the community for women and men, and indeed children, can often address the root causes of offending, including drug and substance abuse. We know that offenders are often people of multiple disadvantage and tackling those drivers to offending is key. We also know that if men and women are to cease from reoffending, they need purposeful work, strong relationship, addiction intervention and a home. A project I've been an advocate for in the Diocese of Gloucester is the Prisoners Building Homes programme. Prisoners are working with a modular housing provider to build low-carbon modular homes for local communities and vulnerable people across the southwest, hopefully including for prison leavers. Prisoners are, inquiring, are acquiring skills for future employment, and I'd love to see more projects like this, but it will take significant cross- and interdepartmental working and the will to think outside the box when commissioning or securing funding. A recent IMB report on HMB Bronzefield found that 65% of women face homelessness on release. I would urge Her Majesty's Government to continue to engage on this issue in a meaningful, interdepartmental way and with a gendered approach. And so to the voluntary sector. Lord Farmer has highlighted the importance of relationship. As a Lord spiritual, this is not a surprise. Restored relationship sits at the heart of Christian belief, and I'm glad Lord Farmer has highlighted the importance of chaplaincy, paid and voluntary, in prison and beyond the gate. Relationship sits at the heart of so much of the work of the voluntary sector, supporting the charity sector in a commitment to the flourishing of individuals and communities, not least with prison leavers. We have many examples, not least within the faith-based sector, such as the Welcome Directory, which signposts prison leavers to worshipping communities of all faiths to find a place of welcome and community. The Prison Advice and Care Trust, PACT, who have volunteers and staff in courts, prisons, probation services and the wider community. And there are so, so many local and national initiatives with stories to tell of transformed lives. 
People in the charitable and voluntary sector stand ready to be part of the solution, but it needs the government to intentionally work with them and tap into their considerable experience, wisdom and insights. Returning to the overall focus of today's debate, I would argue that sustainably funded community intervention and purposeful rehabilitation in prison and beyond the gate need not carry a high financial increase if we realign the funding, stop a focus on more prison places and address the pervasive issue of more and longer sentences which are failing both victims and prisoners. I urge noble lords to join me in pushing for national debate informed not by the occasional sensational Daily Mail headline, but rather by evidence so that we can turn the tide for the sake of our overcrowded prisons and for real justice for victims of crime so that re-offending is tackled effectively once and for all. I invite the Noble Lord the Minister to meet with me and those behind the Independent Commission to reflect further. It is, of course, easier to file all this in the too difficult drawer and continue to focus on lengthening sentences, building more prisons. But I hope for a better way, and I look forward to the rest of today's debate.